Okay, so let's talk a little bit about understanding these uh, diameters and why we see these short average path lengths in, in a bit of detail. Um, so uh, when we looked at this last one, uh, the theorem we just talked about in terms of the average distance being proportional to log n over log d for a certain class of random graphs. Um, when we do these kinds of calculations, uh, you know, the, the ideas are fairly simple, even though the, some of the, the details behind the theorems can be complicated. And so what, what we can start with is a very easy calculation. Let's suppose that we had something which is a very regular tree, what might be known as a, a Cayley tree. So each node bes besides the very end nodes in the tree are going to have um, degree D. So let's start with some degree D, say, you know, say four. And uh, each node then reaches other, uh, four others, and then the end nodes will just have um, one connection. So the idea here would be, for instance, um, you know, we start with one node, it has four neighbors, um, so we reach, you know, say D nodes in, at the first step, and then we can keep track of how far we're reaching out, how many nodes we're going to reach out to. And what we'll do is just keep track of, in order to do a rough calculation of, say, the, the path length from this node to other nodes, we'll keep track of how long it takes to reach the furthest out node to make sure that we've reached everybody. So on, on step one, we reach D other nodes. Um, the next step, we reach uh, another D minus one, right? So now each one of these has four neighbors, so we get three more neighbors out here and so forth. So we reach uh, D on the first step, we reach another D times D minus one on the second step, um, then uh, D times D minus one squared, D times D minus one cubed, and so forth. So after L steps, after we've gone out L steps, we've reached roughly D to the L nodes um, in, in total. So in particular, if you sort of, you know, move out L, L links from the root in each direction, we're hitting D time, uh, plus D times D minus one and, and so forth. You, you total all this up, you can go through, um, this looks like D times D minus one to the L minus one over D minus two. You can sort of, you know, sum up what that series is. But roughly, for reasonably large D, um, this is going to begin to look like D minus one to the L, okay? So this um, captures sort of how much you're reaching out, and you're reaching out exponentially. So in order to reach, if we want to reach n minus 1, the rest of all the nodes, how many steps do we have to go out until we've reached that many? Well, um, we need d minus 1 to the n, uh, l to be equal to n, right, roughly, or n minus 1, I mean, either way. Um, so these are approximate calculations. So what is, uh, if we solve this for L, we can take a log of both sides of this equation to solve it for L. What we get is that the L that solves this equation has to be on the order of log N, um, log of D minus one, which is basically gonna be similar to log of D if D is reasonably large. So we end up with L on the order of log N over log D. Well, not by accident, this is exactly the number we saw in that theorem about the Erdos-Renyi random graphs. So if you just put out a random graph, we were getting something like that. So if we had a really regular tree, we would end up having this kind of calculation for how long it took to, to reach somebody at the center to reach the other ones. Now, you know, there's going to be calculations. This is just one node get, reaching the other ones. Um, the overall diameter is going to be on the order of twice this but roughly proportional to that. Um, and so in, in terms of details, um, you know, what if this was not a tree, but actually an Erdos Renyi random graph? Why is it going to come out to be a similar uh, number here? Um, so here, what we have is all have the same degree. Um, really, in, in reality, they're random, right? And so part of the difficulty is that not everybody's going to have the same degree. Uh, well, part of the proof that the erdos renyi random graph has the same diameter as what we just went through is going to be that the fraction of nodes that have nearly the average degree is going to be close to one in a large network. And nearly, I mean, you know, within some factor of, of the, the degree. Um, what's another problem? Here we're assuming that things branch out really nicely from a given node and we keep reaching new nodes at every point in time. Part of the difficulty is that when you actually do this calculation, 
uh, explicitly, some of the links might be by branching back, right? So we started a given node, we reach other nodes, we reach further ones, but maybe at some point um, some of the links uh, actually come back to, to, to earlier parts of the graph. And so uh, what's going to be important is that most of the links, until you get to the sort of the last step in this process, are still reaching new nodes that haven't been reached. That's another part of the proof. Um, so when you go through and, and do these calculations in detail, uh, then you can find that, that roughly a random graph still has a lot of the same properties that a tree has. And those properties mean that you keep branching out fairly well and with roughly the average uh, growth pattern until you get, um, until you've reached almost all the nodes. And so you get a calculation that looks a lot like log n over log d. Now for those who are interested, I'll have a lecture that goes through in a little bit more detail into how those calculations work and how you can actually bound some of these probabilities. Um, for those who aren't, don't really want to uh, deal with the math, um, next we'll take a look at some, some numbers to check whether this log n over log d looks reasonable in terms of a calculation or not.